Sword Art Online has pretty looking animation and a pretty good soundtrack, but it has horrible fight choreography, which is its biggest weakness. The blue demon fight has no flow and becomes a bunch of flashing lights more than choreography. Then the show has a habit of either going first person perspective or just facing Kirito, which leads to less effort having to be put in by the animators. And I can't be the only one who noticed that every fight in Sword Art Online happens in a flat spacious area with no objects. These people fight in the most boring places, and I think it's done so the animators don't have to worry about space. Basically, it makes every fight seem kind of samey. But the best way to make my points is to compare two similar fights from another show with swords. There are better fights than the one I'm about to show, but I'm going to be fair and pick something before SAO came out and make it a sword fight and make it a fight where the main character loses. So there can be no complaints. I'm choosing the first round fight of Mugen vs. Sarah. There are points where the fights have different endings because both fights are at different points in the story, so I won't compare that and I won't even compare context. This is all about choreography. So people who haven't seen Samurai Shampoo and Sword Art Online, let me explain these characters' fighting styles. Mugen is a fast fighter and works more with his instincts than his intellect. He is very freeform and has little to no sense of structure in his movements, but that doesn't mean that he's not extremely talented. And the person he is fighting is a blind swordsman type, if you're wondering. Kirito has two swords. He is supposedly the fastest guy in the game with the highest reflexes. He uses the game's sword combos most of the time, and he is known as the best in the game except for the guy that he is facing in this specific fight. All right, let's dissect the SAO fight first. This starts with Kirito charging in. First problem, the blurred background. Minor nitpick, but it's lazy for a final fight. But moving on, they clash swords, and then it does an odd cut by immediately zooming out with no sense of flow whatsoever. Then they turn the camera to do another cut with the sword slashes but now to a profile shot of Kaiba. Then he slashes at Kirito, and then Kirito evades. They immediately cut to an overhead shot that shows how awkward Kirito looks swinging his swords. His arms look extremely stiff. Now it goes to the laziest thing this show could do in a fight. Show only one character fighting facing the camera, that way you don't have to worry about object placement. It goes to a sideways shot, which actually looks competent before immediately cutting again. Are you starting to see a pattern? It does another profile shot of Kaiba, then it has him attack. Kirito dual sword blocks, it, it cuts to an overhead shot, and he jumps away. He then charges back, swinging his swords awkwardly. Seriously, this guy keeps on swinging these swords like they're dual axes more than their swords, and even those are less stiff. He then jumps up for Kaiba, and now we're back to a sideways shot where we get some good contact, but it cuts to first person perspective. <sighs> If I haven't made it apparent, I hate these cuts with a passion. It's just annoying. You get used to one view, then it cuts to a worse shot. Then while he's attacking, for some reason, we get this close up to his eye. If anyone can explain it to me, I will reject my complaint if you do. Kirito attempts to be smart and save budget by creating a dust cloud. Come on, what is this Dragon Ball Z? But in the context of the fight, it makes sense. Now, where did the dust come from on a stone stage? Hell if I know. It was futile though, because the dust disappears immediately. Kirito gets cut and now does what I would classify as the stupidest moment in the fight. When the fight started, Kirito said, I can't use sword skills, I have to use my physical strength. But then he goes to use sword skills, coming in with prior information that this is the only thing that wouldn't work. But he does this as a last resort, like a freaking idiot. I mean, he deserves to lose. He sees how Kaiba smiles knowingly, but continues anyway like he doesn't know why. Then it pulls some Street Fighter crap and continues on with the faraway shot, only hitting the sealed. Then does four close-up shots, none of which have actual choreography in it. He realizes he's gonna lose, he uses some reanimation from the Blue Demon fight, and he breaks his sword. There's some stuff after this, like Asuna getting killed, Kirito giving up on life, but defying death because... Potatoes... But this is where choreography stops being a factor. Now let's compare that mess to not even the final fight in Samurai Champloo. This fight is between Mugen and Sarah. It's happening because she is hired to kill him, but she doesn't really want to, but her son's life is on the line. And Mugen thinks she killed Jean, another swordman on par with Mugen. The fight begins with some taunting, verbally and physically. In this taunting, Mugen gets cut on his face. He says maybe he doesn't have to go easy on her. 
Mugen goes in for the kill, but Sarah keeps on evading. Now this fight uses the only showing one fighter thing too, but it uses it to better effect. In this fight, it's used to emphasize the dodging and how Mugen is not even close to hitting her, unlike an SAO where it's used for no real particular reason. She then attacks back in a circular motion, then it cuts to her feet, emphasizing her footwork. Cuts back out to show a Mugen evading till he blocks with his sandal. He does a backflip to get away and decides the high ground is the best option. He also realizes that he can't stay too close to her for too long. He gets to the rock, but she immediately destroyed it. Destroying that advantage, she then uses rocks to slip him up and get hurt him and get rid of his stamina. Mugen falls into some broken wood and picks it up. Still thinking high ground is the best option, he gets on a bigger rock, but she destroys that rock too. He then realizes that he should have never even thought of going easy on her, and classifies her as a league of her own. He jumps up and tries to hit her with the wood. It cuts to Fu, another main character who is also out at this time, and she starts to hear the fight. Mugen then starts to get more creative. He starts blocking with his scalpel and his sword, bending over backwards, tries to even trip her. They start running along the side of the bank and sword clash, but Mugen gets overwhelmed and gets a pretty serious cut at his stomach, and he gets knocked into the water. This is where things stop being about choreography in this fight. Look, I could care less if you like the SAO fight. It doesn't matter. Hell, if you hate both fights, I don't care. I don't even care if you like both fights. I just wanted to make this video to show you the difference between a good fight with choreography and a bad fight with bad choreography. Because I never understood when people said that SAO had bad choreography until I rewatched it. So I hope you can at least agree one fight was better than the other.